So today we're going to work on projectiles. We're going to continue working on this basic projectile that we have and update it a little bit with a shadow and a new texture. Then we're also going to add a newer projectile that's going to use a tween. Then we're going to take a look at the special ability button on this tower that will shoot a whole bunch of bullets around in a circle. So just to remind you where we're coming from, the old projectile is a simple gradient. And in the script, we just set the rotation to look at the target, and then we moved it in the direction that it was rotated. Now when we update this, we're going to actually move this code out of the physics process into another function that we will call. And we're going to make a start function for reasons that are related to inheritance, which we'll talk about in just a minute. So this new projectile has two different sprites to it. It has the bullet itself and a shadow underneath. And the shadow is actually just the same sprite that I modulated to dark and I brought the alpha down so it looks like a shadow. Now it's important to know that these are two different sprites because I will have to change the code instead of just rotating the entire object. I have to rotate the sprites individually, otherwise the shadow will end up on top and we'll lose that isometric perspective because we always want the shadow to be below the actual bullet or projectile. So in the code, what we're going to do is we're actually going to move all that physics process stuff into a movement function and this start function we're going to cover a few more things. So just to remind you from the last video, when we're making this instance of the projectile, we're sending the position where the projectile should start and the target. So this one is a vector two, this one's actually an object. We're going to set the position of this projectile to the start position, and then the rotation of both the sprite and the shadow are going to be a vector two of just a horizontal line, and you get the angle to the target's global position minus our position plus the target offset. So in the enemy script, I just added a variable called target offset. That way when the bullet shoots, it's not shooting at the path below, it's actually shooting where the ship is. So after we've done all of that math, we need to normalize it and that will give us the proper rotation for our sprite. And then we just set the shadows rotation to the same rotation. So this math is optional, but it has to do with the idea of an isometric perspective. So when we're looking at this game, the tiles are 128 by 64. Now, that's just the perspective that we see. The actual distance traveled should be the same going north and south as it is going east and west. And how I show that is, imagine that this is a tile in our game, and you look at it from the top down, you can see that the diagonals are all of the same length. But when you rotate to an isometric view, in 2D space, this line becomes a lot shorter, and this line is a lot longer. So if you're going north and south, the projectile should be going the same speed, but it appears to be going slower. So how we're going to create that illusion is find out how far north or south the projectile is rotated. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that horizontal line again that's just going to the right. We're going to get the dot product of that same equation that we had just up here that's going to give us a vector to the target. And the dot product, what that means is when if you look at the docs, basically what it means is if the vector is pointed or the line is pointed in the same direction as this horizontal line, then we will get one. If it is perpendicular, it'll return a zero, and if it's pointed away, it'll give a negative one. Now, we don't ever actually want a negative one, so that is why we're going to get the absolute value, because we want it to be going full speed, whether it's going east or west. We only want it to slow down if it's going north or south. Once you get that rotational offset, you're actually going to uh, set the scale to that. And I thought it would be the scale X, but for some reason, it's the, sc the scale Y seems to be working right now. But anyway, it's, it's never going to be less than half. And if it is going east or west, then we'll add another half to equal one, so it'll be the normal size. But if it's going north or south, we'll have 0.5 times zero. 
and then it'll be squished to a half, and it could also be anything in between. Now what that looks like is when it shoots up, it's squished, and when it shoots to the side, it's the regular size. Now this isn't necessarily mandatory to do, but it's just an optional stylistic choice. We're also going to set the speed of the projectile to, again, the max speed divided by two, so kind of like a half, plus the max speed divided by two, which is like this half, times that offset. When you shoot up, it moves slower and it's squished, and when you shoot to the side, it is full size and it goes faster to give that perception of depth when it's shooting up. Now again, the movement is just moving along the direction that is it is rotated. Now the reason why I moved this code out of the physics process is because of inheritance. So this is the base script for my projectiles and I have another projectile that is going to rewrite the start function and the movement function. I don't need to move it in the direction that it's rotated because I'm going to take care of the movement with a tween. So the first thing I did is I have a tween here, so I rewrote the start function, but I actually want this code in the original start function to apply that rotation to the shadow and the, the projectile sprite and that scaling and the change of speed which I'm currently not using the speed, but we'll add it eventually. I want this code to run, so this script extends that same script we just got done looking at. When you write a function, and then in a inherited script, you write that same function, it will override that function, and it will not run the code that's in the parent script. But if you do want it to run that code, you can put dot and then the function, and that will run the original code. Now, in the movement, I don't actually want it to run the code, so I just basically canceled out that, that function, so I just pass, and it will not run this change in velocity in this script up here. So in this function, what we're going to do, is we're going to figure out how long the tween should last by, get, by starting with the start position and getting the distance to the target position plus that target's offset. And then we will divide that by our max speed. So when you write a script that inherits from another script, you can still use the variables from that original script. So this max speed is not really defined here, but it is defined here, so you won't have a problem. Now, Again, the reason why I moved the movement out of the physics process is because this trick of overwriting a function doesn't work on physics process, and I haven't tried all of the built-in functions, but it doesn't work on the ready and the physics process. It will, even if you write physics process here, it will run the code in the parent script, and then it will run the code here. So I want to actually... I, I, that's why I made my own functions for the re basically that are start and the physics process because I want to be able to cancel out the code from the template if I want to. So looking at the tween, we're just going to interpolate the position. When you use a tween and you just interpolate a property, you just have to fill all of these in. The first one is just the object, and this is the variable that you're switch you're changing. So any of these could be tweened. Any of anything that has a property. And then this is the starting position, the ending position, how long the tween is going to take, what type of tween it is, and if is it going to be eased in or eased out. Now this is actually one of the coolest parts of the tween, is you, this right now is just a translinear, but we could totally have something a lot more interesting. So if you have like trans exponential, then you could have the effect of the target kind of hanging there for just a second and then zooming off to the target. Now the tween I have a signal that says when the tween is completed, we will terminate the projectile. And I should also mention that in the base scene, I added a timer that has a timeout function that after four seconds, it will also delete the bullet. That way we don't have bullets that are just flying on forever. So the last thing that I've added to the purple tower, I added this button that when clicked, I run this code that puts the tower into frenzy mode. So what the frenzy button's going to do is when you click it, it's going to shoot off a whole bunch of bullets in a big circle. So when you click the button, we send a signal to this function. If you're not in frenzy mode, which is just going to be a 
kind of a simple state or a boolean that we'll see if we're in the frenzy mode. We're going to go into frenzy mode and we're going to stop the reload timer because I don't want the reload timer to allow the tower to shoot while this is happening. So we'll go ahead and stop the timer, turn can shoot to false, and then we're going to be in frenzy mode. Then for each shot in the number of shots, right now it's 50, we're going to have our position be the projectile spawn so just like always we have the position be where the tower shoots from and then we're going to emit a signal that is going to tell the projectile and the position and the frenzy target and just a reminder the projectile is just the scene of the type of projectile that we're going to be shooting then the position like i said is where the projectile will start and the frenzy target is actually a position 2D that I put up here, and I put it inside of, inside of a pivot, that way we can rotate it around in a circle. Now we're going to add to the pivot's rotation two pi divided by the number of shots. So rotation is in radians, and rotation degrees is obviously in degrees. But we have two pi, which is basically 360, divide that full circle by 50 and each time that we shoot we're going to wait just a tiny bit till we shoot again otherwise they'll all pop out at the same time and it actually brings the frame rate down so we're going to space out the bullets just a little bit to help with the frame rate once we're done with this loop we will turn the frenzy mode off and then we will restart that reload timer that way our tower can shoot normally again now it's also worth mentioning that you can do way cooler things in here than just shooting in a circle. If you prefer something like, if you just put in three, you'll end up with something like this. It's pretty neat. This is one. So bump up how many we're shooting. And I also added onto the level template just a little rich text uh, label. That way I can see what the frame rate of the game is, and it should be running at 60 frames per second. I also added an input in the input map, that way I can press F and get all of the nodes, or all of the purple towers basically, so get groups in nodes frenzy, and then I'm going to call the frenzy mode on all of them, that way I can shoot them all at with a click of a button. Now with this first projectile that just adds to the movement, and this is just for debugging, but this is the first projectile that we went over. And you can do three or so when they're shooting 250, and it doesn't really drop the frame rate at all. But once you get up to four, you can see that it drops down to about 41, down to 32. When we put the tweening projectile, I can have four towers, and it didn't actually drop at all. It dropped to 52 when I started to shoot. And I can have about eight of them, and it dropped down to 34 there for a second, but that's way better than the basic one. So, basically overall I've had way better luck with tweening a whole bunch of objects than just adding to their position a whole bunch. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any suggestions for other types of projectiles, please let me know because I will probably be working on projectiles for a while just because I enjoy making projectiles and I think this is fun.